Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. I just make videos about doing creative things with your photography and trying to share tips and tricks to help you kind of up your game. And in today's video, I'm doing something a little bit different and that is um, I'm using Photoshop for one element of what I'm doing and then Luminar for the other element. And um, this is kind of an accident, honestly, that I came across this technique. I was just on YouTube and for some reason this popped up in front of me and I don't even know why. I wasn't searching for it. I was looking at the usual stuff I look at and um, it popped up. And so I, I looked at this and I've seen this technique before. You've probably seen it as, as well. But I thought, you know what? That's a fun creative experiment. And truthfully, I don't really use Photoshop. I've never been a big fan of it. It's incredibly powerful. I just don't feel like it's very intuitive and I don't really feel like it's designed for photographers um, that well. So. Anyway, so I started playing around with it and I was like, you know what, I have Photoshop because I have the Lightroom photography plan from Adobe or whatever it's called. And I thought, you know what, I'll just mess around in Photoshop, see what I come up with. And then I started taking the images into Luminar and adding to them and really having fun. And so that's what I'm talking about today. So this is what they call the twirl effect. I went through a number of different videos. Um, I'll link to the one down below that I uh, found the most helpful. And that's the technique I'm really using here. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Here's a photo that I did recently in a video and after a few minutes, I turned it into that. Um, and so here's another video, uh, or excuse me, a photo you may have seen in a recent video and in just a couple of minutes of work, turned it into that. So you can kind of get the idea here. Here's a, just a night shot from Austin, turned it into that. Super colorful and different. You can kind of get the idea. Here's another one from a recent video and turned it into that. I mean, it doesn't even, it, well, obviously it doesn't look like the, the original photo. Here's one I, I really like. Um, just a shot from Austin one night when I was out and about one evening and turned it into that. So let me hop into Photoshop and show you how you do this and then I'll go from there into Luminar to show you how I enhance it. Okay, so here's a sample photo in Photoshop. Now the first thing I recommend doing is go to layers and when you get that layer, just I do control click and I say convert to smart object. That's an essential, essential, essential thing and that's uh, because I, um, I believe that video said it was optional or something and so I was like, oh, I'll just skip that. I'll just go into the, getting the filters and getting crazy. But it's a really big deal and I'll explain why in a few minutes. So do convert to a smart object. And then the first thing you do is you go to filter and you go to pixelate and you go to mezzotint. And mezzotint comes up with this weird stuff and honestly, it looks horrible. But there it is. And you don't do fine dots, you do medium strokes and you say, okay. And like I said, it looks terrible, but that's okay. We're only gonna be there for a second because after that you go back to filter and you go to blur and you go to radial blur. And with the radial blur, I take the amount all the way to 100 and I say zoom and then you say okay. And the photo looks different already as it should. I'm gonna do the same thing again. So once more, radial blur, 100, zoom, okay. And you can see it's getting pretty smooth. And I'm gonna do it one more time. Filter, radial blur, same thing, 100, zoom, and okay. And by the way, on quality, I just use good. That's totally fine. I'm just using JPEGs here. I don't even, uh, I haven't even tried it with a raw file. I don't really see a reason to because I'm just kind of making geometric fun shapes. Anyway, so radial blur basically three times. And then here's where you start getting the twist or the twirl. You go to filter, you go to distort, and you go to twirl. And as you can see, it comes up with this nice little menu. The first thing I do is I say negative 100 and say okay. And that's where you start getting the twirl effect. Now, at the beginning of this video, I said, hey, be sure and convert it to a smart object. This is the reason why. At this point, go back to layers and you wanna get that twirl and you double click on that. And the reason why is you wanna go in here to blending modes and you wanna say lighten. And when you do that, notice that that's where you get all the twisty fibers that start to overlap and intersect with one another. So that's why the smart object is a crucial step. Then I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna say filter, distort, if I can hold it, a distort and twirl. And this time, instead of negative 100, I'm gonna do positive 100. So I'm just gonna take the fibers and overlap them again. And that's where you get that look. At this point, you could do anything you wanted with it. You could actually do more uh, twirling if you wanted to, and I've done that. It just enhances the design and gets it more crazy, but I really like it like that. Or the second thing you could do is, um, in Photoshop, you could go adjust colors and that sort of thing. I prefer to do that on Luminar, and that's what I'm gonna do in a minute. But first, I'm gonna give you one more example. Let me click over to this photo. Oops, sorry, I'm on that one. Let me click to this photo. So. And just a night shot I took probably seven, eight years ago in Oklahoma City. And again, start out with layers. I'm gonna say control, right click, and convert to smart object. 
and now I'm ready to go. So filter and pixelate and mesotint and it's already on medium strokes. I'm going to say OK. Looks terrible. Don't worry about it. Filter, blur, radial blur and it's defaulting to what I had before which is amount 100 and zoom quality good. I'm going to say OK. There you go. I'm going to do that two more times. Radial blur, 100, zoom OK and then filter, radial blur, 100, zoom OK. And there we go. You can see we got some really nice colors in this one considering where we started with the image. So now we're going to go have the fun where you go to uh, distort and you say twirl and this is where I'm going to do negative 100 and I'm going to say OK. And remember layers and then you come over here you double click on that twirl uh, filter that you just did and we're going to change the blend mode. So I'm going to come up here say blend mode lighten and say OK and you can see how that's overlapping now and the fibers are starting to twist and intersect which I think is what really makes the image. So one more time filter I'm going to say distort I'm going to say twirl and this time I'm going to do positive 100 and I'm going to say OK and there you go. I think we have two really cool looking images. So there's that one and there's that one. So there you go. Now I'm going to pop over into Luminar and take these and make some in color enhancements and that sort of thing to these images. OK, here we go. So in Luminar, uh, this is a, just a photo that that photo from Heidelberg, right? So you can see them here. I've got them added in. These are the two images. This one is that photo and this one is the night shot from Oklahoma City. I'm going to start with this one and here's what I've been doing honestly. I've just been going in and getting some of my own looks. Um, I've been going into my London calling pack and there's so many different colors here and then I just kind of been clicking through these uh, and just seeing what looks good because all my presets and this is not a ploy to get you to buy my presets. You can go do your own um, but as I click on these you know, I'm seeing some really cool and interesting colors and design. I would love this. Look at that. That's pretty cool. I think I'll stick with that one this time. So I'm going to close the looks menu. And then generally what I'm doing is I'm coming in here and I'm just making some further adjustments. Maybe I'll bump up the contrast a little bit. Maybe pull down the highlights. Um, and I'm honestly just kind of playing around with some of the different tools that are built into Luminar to get to my final result. But that's what I started with, which is fun, fibrous, kind of flowing. Uh, and now a very vibrant, geometrically kind of colorful and exciting look. So there you go. One more time. There's before and after. And keep in mind that photo started with uh, this image here. So it's it's uh, there's obviously a lot of color in this image, but it's turning into something that's very different and very unique, I think. So that's a lot of fun. Now I'm going to go take this image, which uh, in Photoshop we turned into that. And I'm just going to pop over here to looks again. And like I said, I've just been using some of my looks, but you obviously don't have to do that. I'm just clicking on these and that's pretty cool. This night on the streets looks pretty cool. Yeah, look at that. That looks awesome. I think, I mean, this is just fun. It's a fun creative experiment. This one looks pretty good as well. In fact, I think I'll go with that one here. Let me close looks and wow. I mean, it's super vibrant and fun. And then of course you have all your controls here. So I am finding that some of the highlights need to be pulled down at times because I don't want to lose some of the visibility to those fibers. And speaking of that, that's where I've been using AI structure a lot. And I've just been dragging that to the right to give it a little bit more crispiness. And you can see how that really helps to define those edges on the fibers. So it just really creates a bit punchier image. There's the before and there's the current state. Honestly, your creative um, output is endless. I recommend just experimenting with the different tools and sliders here. You can go into the Pro tab and use color balance, uh, those kind of things to really enhance things and just have fun. But it's a fun creative experiment. It's something great you can do. And as I said at the beginning, you don't have to start with a great photo. You can kind of start with anything. And then with all the power in Luminar, you know, after you do all the twisty, twirly fun in Photoshop, in Luminar you have so much color control that it just gives you a lot of creative sort of fun you can do. And I'm having fun. I've been, I've probably done this on a couple of dozen images over the last week and um, probably going to go do some more. So that's really it for today's isolation editing challenge. If you don't have Photoshop, I'm not sure if you can do this in other uh, tools. Uh, you cannot build this twirly stuff in Luminar because it doesn't have the same kind of zoom or uh, twirl effect. That's why I went into Photoshop. But I think Affinity Photo has it. There may be some others. But um, I'm just doing it in Photoshop and then having all the color fun here in Luminar. A fun creative outlet, something exciting to do and play around with. 
see what you come up with. Experiment, have fun. Most of all, stay safe out there. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you soon, my friends. Have a great day. Take care and adios.